First and foremost, I greet all of you on this very auspicious occasion, and that is the occasion of Eid al Fajr and Eid al Jummah at the same time. And then I also greet you with a very warm greeting of salam. Glad tidings that it was good to be back home, it was good to see all of the familiar faces that we gathered here for Eid, many Eid. So it's good to see everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Quran, chapter 110, that whenever the help and assistance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and victory, this statement by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it entails a few things. The first thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's aid and his assistance and his help is something that one should have certainty in. Because he states, what And when that assistance comes, and when that help comes, and that victory comes, that opening comes. And this is in Arabic, linguistically, Whenever something is possible, it is started with either, when. If something is not possible, it begins with lo. As Allah SWT, he states in the Quran, لَوْ كَانَ فِيهِمَا آلِهَتَانِ لَفَسَدَتَا That if there were two gods in this world, then this world would be destroyed. So he begins with the conditional phrase lo. And whenever something is begun with the conditional phrase no, that means that that thing which comes after it is impossible. So Allah SWT, he mentions in the Quran that when the help of Allah SWT comes. And he emphasizes this point. There's a reason, and we'll get to that reason, why Allah SWT states that when the, his help comes. Or why does he put it in these terms? so that we will understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help and his assistance is always here. And that we should have certainty. One of the statements that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes in chapter 30 of the Quran, he says, وَكَانَ حَقَّنَ عَلَيْنَا نَصْرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ SubhanAllah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says that it is a right upon us right upon Allah SWT, right upon those who Allah SWT delegates on his behalf, the prophets, the imams, the angels. He says, it is a right upon us to assist the believers. And when we think of this term, especially that Allah SWT says, When you have a right over someone, that means that you have a degree of authority. But we know that we have absolutely no authority over Allah SWT. For example, so that you, this point is very clear, if I lend someone some money, then I have a haq over this person to ask for my money back whenever I want. Even to the point that if the person is making salat, it is my right to ask them that give me my money, I loan you money. And that person has to give me money. Even if he is in salat. If he has it, he gives it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, وَكَانَ حَقْوَ عَلَيْنَا So 
But what Allah SWT means by this and what he intends, he wants to drive this point home. That never think that Allah SWT will not help you. Never have doubts in Allah SWT's assistance and his help. And I'm saying this because, of course, when we look at the events of this past year, or maybe one year or two years, when we look at the Ummah as a whole, we see that the Ummah has been in quite some difficulties, fighting with one another. Some who are claiming to, wanting to establish the deen of Allah, but they're doing injustice. We, on a communal level, we may have had problems, difficulties. On a personal level, we may have had problems and difficulties. But throughout all of these difficulties, one thing that we must be certain of, and we should never have doubt in, is that Allah SWT will help us and He will assist us after these difficulties. In America and English, we often say that when we face difficulties, and we face trials and calamities, we say that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And all of the difficulties we had began to make us stronger. To some degree, Ramadan in itself is a difficulty. Normally, you don't go without food from dawn to sunset. This is not our normal routine of life. But we are prescribed to do this. Allah SWT prescribes us to fast. To undertake the sin which may be slightly uncomfortable at times. Perhaps also in those first few days, you get a little lightheaded, get hungry. But what we notice is that after a few days, after a week, it becomes very normal. This difficulty is no longer difficult. Allah SWT assists you in raising your spiritual consciousness. He assists you through this event which seems difficult, but it's not So Allah SWT takes it through help, who assists whatever problems you have, whatever difficulties you have in your personal life, in your community, in the life of the Ummah. Allah SWT, He will be there. He will help. Of course, it is upon us also to do our own part as well, to help to assist ourselves, whether personally, our own family, whether in our community, whether as a ummah, to assist in this help from our Muslim Ta'ala. Because he says, That it is the right that we have placed upon ourselves. That Allah SWT has placed upon himself, Allah SWT has placed upon his prophet, his imams, upon the angels, upon the believers, upon the mu'min. That when we look at our family, our community, our brother, our ummah, and if we consider ourselves as Brother Saint Shah, you mentioned so eloquently that. When you are in Ramadan, you become Alamah. And if you're the guest for more than three days, you become a part of that family. You become Alamah. So if you're a part of that Alamah, people of Allah, the believers, and then when Allah SWT, He says, Rukana haqqana alayna. And you follow him. He's talking about you. That you should sense a right to your fellow brother, to your family member, to your community, to your ummah, that you must assist and you must help. Imam Ali alayhi salatu wasalam in a, the pearls of wisdom of Guru Muhammad, he says, an intasara billah azza nasru that whosoever seeks assistance with Allah SWT, through Allah SWT, then that person's 
assistance, his help will be strengthened. It will be successful. Why don't you not have doubt in it? Likewise, he warns us as well. He warns us about doing injustice to one another. He says that this will actually counter one's assistance and help those who are actually going against you. So we cannot assist one another, we cannot help one another if we are being unjust, or unjust to one another. That if we are not observing one another's rights, if we are trampling upon one another's rights, then we're not assisting ourselves. We're actually helping those who are against you. So we must be very careful of this. And likewise, he states in the Pearls of Wisdom about Nasir, about advice. But when you're giving the advice, accept that advice. My book is going against that advice. Again, it counters or is counterproductive to helping yourselves. It's counterproductive to helping your community. It's counterproductive to helping the Ummah. That if that advice that you're given is in line with the teachings of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Then one must accept that advice. One must move forward upon that advice. Still not to prolong, because I know it's going to get hot very soon. I just want to mention one last verse that when I was looking researching on this topic about Allah Subhanahu Wa assistance. One of the most amazing verses that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala mentions on this point is in Surah Al-Hajj. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in verses 15, 15 and 16, He states, whosoever thinks that Allah will not assist him in this life and the hereafter. Let him stretch a rope to the sun or hang a rope from the sun, then let him cut it, cut that rope. Then let him see if this struggle or this effort will take away that which he has engaged. English is not so clear, but when you examine the Arabic and also go to the tafsir there's an amazing verse about Allah SWT assistant. He says, وَمَنْ كَانَ يَذُنْ أَنْ لَيْ يَنْسَرُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيُ وَالْآخَرَ Whoever has doubt, whoever even has the has an assumption. And this particular verse, Allah SWT, he is actually directing it at those who were trying to destroy the Prophet's mission. Those who doubt it in the Prophet, those who doubt it, that, well, the Prophet who will be able to go through all of these difficulties, because they were given, as you say, excuse me, they were given the Prophet hell. They would sometimes hit him with rocks, exile him, make boycotts upon him. And so they said, how could he last through this? And once more time, he directs this verse at these individuals. He says, whoever assumes that Allah SWT will not help his prophet in this world and the next, help him physically and metaphysically, help him tangibly in this world and spiritually. He says, whoever has this assumption and doubt, he says, let him This is one of the most amazing verses because of its the sabab as it's translated means rope. But also a sabab means tariq, a path. So we can understand this, let this individual who has this doubt, who has this assumption, let him embark upon a path. Ila sana. And some of our commentators of Quran, we said that this is amazing. He says, for young people, 
Is it possible if we take it in you know, sabab, not meaning a literal road, which it does not literally mean road, but sabab also to mean a path, a path to the sky, to the heaven. That go as far as you can in this universe, as far as you can. If you have doubt in Allah SWT, if you have doubt in Allah SWT's help, go as far as you can. To hero, even beyond, go as far. And then in that part, in that path, in the yakta, the translation says cut the rope. The yakta also means that you go as far as you can until you can go a little further. He says, and then look, the young girl, then observe and see. See that does this endeavor, does it take away a last of God's heart? Does it buy into or is your plot against the assistance of the Western God? Will it work? One of the other movies also he says to break the rope, even as some have said. It is kinaya, it is metaphorical also to even death. But if, even if one takes his, his or her own life, in other words, to have a vision, in other words, to see what is in the hereafter, what is in the afterlife. But is there something there or not? It's also in kinds of screen. So if one doubts, that not them even take their lives to see that what is beyond this world. To see whether Allah SWT has been true to his promise to assist the prophet in this world and in the world. To assist the believers in this world and in the world. So, that so much emphasis that if Allah SWT, he's speaking like this to those who disbelieve, those who doubt it, go beyond this world. Go as far as you can. Whether it be in the heavens, whether it be through the metaphysical journey of life, that life ends, go oh, and see what happens. See if Allah can go. And if Allah can to those who do not believe in this world, do not believe, what about us as believers? But can we doubt in Allah's can God's help? Can we feel that? Oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has abandoned me, has left me alone, has not provided for me. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And if one doubts, they should read this verse and read it and read it and read it and contemplate it. The help and assistance of Allah comes, in fact, and they will be open. And that opening, as it says, is an opening of the heart. Because before physical victory, the heart is open to the message of the heart. And you will see that many will come into the folds of Islam. Afwaj, subhanAllah, you see this even now. that so much thoughts against Islam, even by those who claim that you are Muslim. But yet, through all of this, we still have those who see the truth and who come into us now, who accept the truth. And this should be nothing but fortify us as believers, those who are already here. And we should take this opportunity and this moment of Eid to reflect upon how Allah SWT has assisted us through this month. All that Allah SWT has given us in the way of guidance, in the way of enlightenment of our hearts, in the way of our sustenance. And we should thank Allah SWT for this help. And we should constantly ask Allah SWT for this help. So that we will be among those who believe. We will be among those who have absolutely no doubt in Allah's help and his plan for us. And I ask Allah SWT to continue to make this day a blessed day for us throughout this whole day, that he continues to shower us with his assistance, his help, his blessings, his mercy, and that he makes this a day for us, a day of strength, that we may move forward into the rest of this year and come back to 
in this blessed month of Ramadan with a stronger faith, stronger Iman, and a stronger community. Al-Akhir al-Da'wana and Alhamdulillah al-Rahmanin Bismillah al-Rahim al-Rahim Al-Asir al-Ini al-Insan al-Rahim al-Qusir Illa al-Ladina amin al-Rahim al-Sahir al-Qad Al-Rasul al-Fakhri al-Rasul First and foremost, I advise myself with everything that I've stated in the first kutba and particularly in the second kutba, which has to do with taqwa, has to do with consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and particularly about instilling and cultivating that taqwa, that consciousness within one's family. It has to do with safeguarding one's family, one's household, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, O you who believe, who anfusakum wa ahlikum wa that save yourselves and your family from the hellfire. And this is something that it is incumbent upon all of us. I think there is no better time to speak about this than in a gathering like this, because we have all come out as not as individuals, but as out as families. Those who are as, who are married and have children, those of us who are single, but we still have an extended family, a community. And inshallah, they will get married soon. Last one time, it says, save yourself, save your families from this hellfire, this phenomenon. One of the ways in that we must do this is to do Amar bin Ma'ruf bin Enjoying the good and forget that which is wrong. But the first principle, as a last one says, is yourself. Who and physical? That we must not think or assume that at any point, if we are not saving ourselves, if we are not ourselves living as we should, that we will be able to safeguard our families. Yes, at times we see this that perhaps I may not be living as I should, as I should be living, and perhaps my son, my daughter, actually becomes more conscious of the Muslim God of life. Becomes more religious, becomes one who prays, one who wears his or her hijab, one who keeps the idea of that's what he or she should be doing. This happens at times. But Allah SWT, he states the general rule, or the golden rule at least, that you should be setting the example for your family. First yourself, you maintain yourself, your adab, your etiquette, your religious practice, and by setting that example, then you will be an example for your children, for your family. Within the right of Ahlul Bayt, the Prophet says, Rahimallahu Rajulan, Kala Ya Ahla. Allah SWT will have mercy upon that individual who calls his family. Salatukum, Masiyanukum, Zakatukum, Miskinukum, Masakinukum. Yatimakum, Jiyanakum. That individual who calls his family to observe these principles of Salat, 
of fasting, of giving the zakat, of observing the rights of those who are orphaned, those who are destitute, and those who are your neighbors. In fact, if we don't live by these principles, then how do we expect and time our children to live by those principles? Sometimes, and this often happens, and I've mentioned it here before, but I just want to emphasize this again, that often our gatherings in the communities, on a weekly basis, perhaps for Dua Kanae, for Jum'ah, Alhamdulillah, we have a steady Saturday program here, which some communities don't have, when we have Eid and all the other celebrations, <coughs> These are fine. These are things which should fortify what is in the home. What should be built in the home is fortified at the communities, not the other way around. Sometimes, and I've seen this, and it's unfortunate at times, that in the homes there is no practice, but when we come to the community, we expect that, oh, well, the community is going to fix everything. No, we start with ourselves. Start with understanding Islam. Start with practicing Islam. And then that will be fortified in our communities. Imam Ali alayhi salatu salam. He said it, Allimu anfusakum wa ahlikum khayr wa adbiru. Again, we start with the same principle. He says, teach yourself. Teach yourselves adequate and manners. Teach yourselves that which is good. Train yourselves. And then you teach your family and train your family. Of course, as and I mention this because as definitely you live here in the West of America, and there are many things that we ourselves can get into which is not right and proper. And even more things that our children can get into. Especially, you know, dealing with technology. And it's good to have these things. There's not anything wrong or bad with having these things, but if we do not train them properly on how to use these things, the texts, cell phones, the iPads, Nexus, all of these things, Facebook, they will tend to misguide and mislead or bring about some of the gray areas that our children should not be involved in. And we should be there, again, first and foremost, to be that example for them. Not to shy and to hide away from our own responsibilities and duties. And our children, again, they should also develop a maturity, again, to listen to the advice of the elders. Whether they're your elder brother and sister in Islam, they may not be related to you by blood, but they're your elder brother and sister in Islam. And they've perhaps gone through the difficulties. They've seen things which they're trying to save you from. Hardships, heartbreaks, headaches. So we, our youth must develop that maturity. And one of the ways that they will develop that maturity is in the home. Our children should not be such that they cannot come to you and talk to you about anything. Have an open relationship. <coughs> because growing up here is definitely different than growing up in Iraq or Iraq or Lebanon or India or Pakistan or Israel. Definitely different. So we have to understand this. Give them a window to speak to us. Give them a window to speak to us so that we can help them, so that we can help solve their problems. And not immediately perhaps get angry with them if they have done something that, oh, well, this shouldn't have been done. Because first and foremost, we should look back to ourselves. What have I done in my household that has created this? Has, has, accepted, has put forth this example. And one of the things that the prophet, he says, he says that you train your children. Again, this comes from being the example. He says, you train them, you be the example and you deliver this message to them. He says, and at that point, if something happens, he says, you've done your responsibility. And this is the case we see in Azad Noor. 
as a means of Maksud. And he did all that he could to call it. Even when it was time for his children to get on, one child did not. He says, Ya Allah, you said that my family would be saved. Allah said, Then he says, He is not from you. Meaning that he has not taken those principles. You've given him everything. There is no shortcoming on your behalf, on your behalf of you. And this is the one thing that we have to do. So that there is, inshallah, to the best of our ability, that there is no shortcoming on our behalf to be an example for our family. And then, inshallah, by that we will raise the children, we raise those who live by the principles of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the person for it, instills in us the wisdom to be a good example for ourselves and then for example for our children and our community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of the believers this month, particularly there was one of the believers who passed away on this day on blessed day of Eid in East Africa. In Dar al Salaam, subhanAllah, he recited to do a nutbah before Salat al Eid, leader Salat al Eid, and he passed away. And subhanAllah, there's not much you can say that when you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as much blessings as he's given, we cannot count the blessings of Allah that Allah has given us in this moment. And if one dies in that state, after, you know this, according to the Prophet, he says that if one fasts as he or she should, then the last one God forgives our sin. Even if one sleeps, then the last one God has forgiven his sins as one sleeps. And then on the blessed day, he eat this book and passes away. So, inshallah, I request that after we read the scripture, that we so a factor of Mu'min, so he's Dr. Professor Mohsen Ali Mu'tib Ali Ali Bina. Professor Mohsen Ali Bina. So inshallah, again, I'll ask my God, bless each and every one of you, and it's blessedly repeat, and may you help us to be the believers that we should be, and the examples for our community and our children. Welcome to that one, and I'm going to thank you as always, we begin with Surah Fatiha for those who are no longer with us. Remember them now, happy and sad occasions, and we say, Allah, 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 farewell speech and um, stayed up till about four in the morning trying to think of what to say but I thought I'll just do what I do best I freestyle um, <laughs> I never really found them just the way I go you know, that's how I roll as they say <clears throat> so I'd like to begin by giving grace in honor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and each and every one of you's who in you is the soul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you have truly brought that forward and you've shown me that there is truth in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that of his signs is that he created us differently so that we may get to know one another and I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessed experience and I think more than anyone else, Sheikh Ayn knows how difficult it is to leave such a community behind. But I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it's not farewell and it's a see you soon. Inshallah. What I want to say to you all is that Allah has trusted you with an Imam. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we offered this amana to the heavens and it could not contain it. And to the earth and it rejected it. And the mountains would have crumbled if we placed that amana on them. Now it depends on you know, whose marja or which book you read in life. But almost unanimously, it's agreed that this amana was the wilaya of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And that the only one who could contain this amana is us, humanity. So we must not forget that what bonds us is stronger than that which divides us. And as we say in Arabic, these words, wear them like you'd wear an earring. Constantly keep them in your ear and constantly keep them in your mind. I want to share with you but one final hadith, which I hope, inshallah, will aid you in your times of difficulties through your growing pains and through your disputes and arguments, as every family does. Families, we always argue. But it's the fact that we're family that we can put the arguments aside and still break bread with one another at the end of the day. Because we know inevitably we're going to see each other the next day. So, you know, let bygones be bygones and just move on rather than hold grudges. But the tradition is that a group of people like me and you who claimed Lafwa Ahlul Bayt who believed themselves to be the Shia of Ahlul Bayt and they felt that they had attained so much of the knowledge and the wisdom of Ahlul Bayt that they could call themselves the Shia of Ahlul Bayt well, We know there's a number of things that you have to achieve before you can you know, be graced with such an honorable title. So they came before Imam Jafar Sadr oh, yeah, no. and they said, Imam, we are of your Shia. What's interesting is how the Imam questioned them. He never asked them about their Salah, although that is important. And he never asked them about anything else of their religion, although it's important. But the reason he didn't ask them is because they didn't say we are Muslims. They claim to be Shia, which means that Shia already does these things. You know, it's the graduation. But what he asked is the criteria of what it means to be a Shia of Adil Bayt. So he said to the leader of the group, he said, if your friend sitting next to you took some of your property without your consent, and later on you came to found out that because of his need he took it without asking you. How would you feel? He said, I will be upset that he took it without my consent. So the Imam said to him, then gather your people and be gone from my company. For indeed you are not of my Shia. Because our Shia are united by their wilaya of Ali and it is stronger than anything else that can divide them. And if you let property come between you and your fellow Shia of Ahlul Bayt, then you are not of our Shia. The thing that unites us, the bond, the glue, is the love for Ali ibn Abi Talib. It is like we say, or like Rasulullah has advised, Silmun liman salamakum wa harbun liman harabakum. So long as an individual is at peace with Ahlul Bayt, we must also be at peace with that individual. So through the murky waters and through the rainy days, always remember that you all belong to the path of Ali alayhi salam. And that, that is the thing which must unite us. Obviously, you know, it doesn't mean go around stealing each other's property and say, hey, listen, we're Shia, we can do that. But the point that Imam was trying to make is the level of importance that we give to belongings. And the wilaya of Amir al-Mu'mineen is the greatest belonging as per the hadith of Imam Sajjad alayhi salam.
whereby an individual comes up to Imam Sajjad and he says, Imam, I am poor. And Imam says, Ajaba. You know, astonishing that you should claim that you are poor. He said, Imam, indeed I am poor. My clothes, you know, they're all full of patches and they don't do anything for me. And I have a house that neither protects me from the heat of the sun or shelters me from the cold of the winter. And I barely go a day with a meal. You know, I'm going day by day hoping that someone will be merciful enough to give me some food. So how am I not poor? I am, you know, the definition of a poor person. So Imam said to him, do you believe Allah has given us Ahlul Bayt authority over everything? He said, why else would I follow you if you don't have authority over everything? He said, then come, let us make a deal, me and you, right now. That I shall give you the heavens and the earth and all they contain for what you have. He said, Imam, what could I possibly have that you will give me the heavens and the earth and all they contain for? He said, give me back your love for us and hate us at the bait and I shall give you whatever you want. He said, Imam, if you was to give me that multiplied by 10, I wouldn't even entertain the thought of leaving your wilaya and joining the ranks of your enemy. So the Imam said to him, by Allah, so how can you say you are poor when you have that which is greater than the heavens and the earth? and all they contain. So this guy in his torn up clothes, in his hungry state, walks out into the streets of Medina saying, by Allah, there is no one richer than the Shia of Ali. And the people looked at him and said, this guy is crazy. So you have that thing which you must never part away with. That thing that bonds us together. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it shall live long, eternally, until we meet each other once again in the gardens of Eden, in the company of those whom we love, Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In conclusion, there's two things I want to say on a lighter note. Some people have come up to me and said, you know, you speak so eloquently, but you've got to do the floor. You know who you are. So you don't say we were, you say we was. There's two reasons for that. One, I grew up in East London and we speak a different dialect, we speak Cockney. And we're very fast to do things and we're not very proper. So we don't say we were, we say we was. That's just how we do, that's how we roll. But more to the point, was you don't say I were you say I was because was is a singular act it's for the one individual so when I speak about the Shia I always like to say we was because we are just one we're not were we will always be a was as far as I'm concerned our actions should be one and the same inshallah Second point is, many of you have asked me questions and asked for references and unfortunately, you know, you can't bring a library, you'll end up paying up to your neck for the um, cargo. So, I've left my contact details with Brother Murtaba, be that my Twitter account or my direct email account, which I specifically got for questions and answers. Inshallah, Brother Murtaba will be sending that out. Um, to the community or if you'd like just approach in person and take those details feel free to get in touch with me but i will not respond to you always immediately because i do have a busy schedule um, you know family work sometimes takes up most of my time so i will respond to you and if i haven't responded to you please don't take no offense it's just a matter of time and inshallah i'll get around to it so i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you have a blessed eid and i pray that inshallah we will see each other once again Thank you very much for giving me your time and thank you very much for teaching me much which I have not known before. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.